This is Digital Byte Computing. We're going to go through the steps on how to install Zen Server by Citrix. So Zen Server is a what's called a hypervisor, uh, lets you install multiple virtual machines inside one single physical uh, computer. Uh, so you can actually run multiple versions of Windows or Linux or whatever you have. So Zen Server is a, uh, a hypervisor much like VMware's ESXi or Microsoft's um, uh, Hyper-V, so it lets you install virtual machines. So I've just downloaded the ISO off the, um, off the Citrix website. It is a free download, so you can download it for free and install it. And then you just put it onto a USB or CD DVD uh, that is bootable and accessible from your BIOS. So go ahead and do that. And then you'll be presented with this login screen. We press enter to start the actual install. So that is gonna start loading a whole bunch of things. It's gonna check the hardware on your computer as well to make sure that it is compatible. Uh, and then we'll continue from there on the uh, install process. Okay, so once that is finished, you'll be presented with a screen to check what sort of keyboard you want to be using. We're just gonna leave it as default. You can navigate through this menu with a tab key and your up and down uh, you know, keys on your keyboard. So we're gonna say okay. Okay, we're gonna say okay to this. And you're gonna accept the license agreement as well. Okay, so you will see this screen pop up uh, if you don't have hardware virtualization enabled in your BIOS. So by default, a lot of standard desktop computers uh, may not have this option on by default. Some servers will. Uh, so if you're running this, say, onto a laptop or onto a desktop to do some testing, or if you, even if you want to run it at home or in your small business, uh, you need to go into your BIOS and enable the feature called hardware virtualization. You should find it in there. Um, it, it, it will be called that or, it'll, or it will be called something similar to that effect. So make sure you do enable it. Now I have seen sometimes when I have installed this um, hypervisor before that it can still pop up even though it has been enabled. So you can still install the software, enable it later on. Other times you may have it already enabled and it still pops up just as a warning. So don't, you know, don't, don't worry about it too much if it still does pop up, but you are certain that it is installed on your BIOS and it is enabled. So we're gonna just say okay with this. It's now going to ask you which disk you would like to use for virtual machine storage. Now you'll see I've already got an 80 gig disk here. Uh, now I'm using a VMware uh, hypervisor to actually install my Zen server hypervisor. So you just select the disk that you want to use. I'm gonna say 80 gig. Then it's gonna ask you if you want to enable thin provisioning. So thin provisioning will be uh, if you have a hard drive that is 80 gig, if you enable, uh, if you don't tick this, it's gonna use that whole 80 gig, right? It's just gonna give it as a full 80 gig lump. If you enable thin provisioning, it'll only use out of that 80 gig, the amount of resources that it needs. So it may need, you know, eight gig to install hypervisor, Zen server, and then it'll grow as it needs. So it's not gonna use that whole 80 gig at once. So that's essentially the difference. So we're just gonna leave that unticked for now, but you can tick it if you want to. Select the type of source that you want. We're gonna say local media. You can also get it from NFS or from the web directly. So we're just gonna say local media because we've got the ISO on my installer. Would you like to install any supplemental packs? So there are add-ons to, um, uh, to the Zen server package. So you can go ahead and do that if you want. We're just gonna say no for this. Do you wanna test your media? Just in case your media could be faulty, et cetera, et cetera. Do you wanna check it? So we're just gonna say skip because I'm pretty confident that it's okay. In your case, you may want to verify the install source and okay. It's now gonna ask you for a root password. So this is your root password that has full access to your Zen server. Put in whatever your password you want and then confirm it and okay. Make sure you note down this password because if you lose this password, then you'll essentially be locked out of your Zen server. So, okay, so make sure that you make, make a note of this password before you, uh, before you forget it. And okay, now you wanna specify some network settings in here. Now, if you are running a DHCP server, we're not gonna go through what a DHCP is in here, 
But essentially, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's something that's going to provide you with an IP address for your computer. So you may already have something similar set up on your router or a separate server, or you can set up a static configuration IP. Now, I generally would recommend setting up a static IP. Uh, that way, you know what the IP is going to be, what the IP of your Zen server is going to be all the time, and it's never going to change. So I'm just going to go ahead and just create one. You may want to set this up to whatever you want to. Okay, so let's just go. We'll set up for this, and then my gateway. Okay, so set that up if you need to, or you can set it on DHCP, but you have the risk of your IP changing and then you not remembering what your Zen server IP is. So just set up a static and you should be good to go. In here, you can set up the host name. All right, so what the actual name of the Zen server is going to be and then your DNS servers. Okay, so let's just call it Zen server test dot local, for example and then my DNS server. So I'm just gonna set up my DNS server, whatever, it doesn't really matter in, in, this, in this example, but set up your DNS server. This is so that it lets you say resolve to a DNS server or resolve out so you can access the internet. So you could also put in your ISP DNS in there if you need to. If it's within a business, you wanna put in your DNS server IPs in there. Okay, one, two, and three, so your primary, your secondary, or even a tertiary DNS server as well. Select your country. So I'm in Australia, so I'm gonna select my country and okay. Select my city. So let's say I'm in New South Wales and okay. How's the time gonna be determined? So use NTP or manually enter the time. So NTP is if you've got a NTP server or a, a switch or router that's using, uh, that, that can actually set your time um, so you can set that if you want to, say if you have a domain controller setting up your NTP, or you can manually set the time in here. It's always recommended to use an NTP server because you want to make sure that all your devices on your network are always kept in sync and in time with everything else. You don't want time going out of whack between your devices because uh, then you can have authentication issues, etc. So we're going to use uh, an NTP server. It's not going to ask you for the NTP server IP, which you just put that in or your, you can actually set as well an example, say an online NTP server. So Microsoft has one, Apple has one, a few other services have NTP servers online, or you can set up your local one as well. Okay, and we're gonna say okay. All right, you're good to go. So let's just go and install Zen server. The install will take uh, not too long. Uh, it's going to go and get all your all your all the apps and all the files that it needs to install, and we'll check back once this is ready to go. So the install will complete. It's also asking you to remove any media from your drive. So if you have your CD DVD with the ISO in there or your USB stick plugged in with the ISO, just remove those now before you reboot. Otherwise it's gonna boot it up again. So just remove it now and okay. So that install is now complete. You'll see that um, you can see some information there. So I've obviously got VMware virtual platform in there. Yours will have your own uh, hardware of your server. Shows you the Zen server version, um, a few things like my IP address, etc. You can navigate through a whole bunch of things. You can actually change your IP, uh, change your DNS, uh, do a whole bunch of things. You can change your passwords, etc. Show you a list of what virtual machines you in here, you have in here as well. So that's essentially the whole install. There is a few other bits and pieces that you can change in here as well. Uh, you can also reboot and shut down your Zen server from here as well. So then the next thing would be for you to go and then download the Citrix, um, the actual client, so that you can actually connect into the Zen server. So this is via a GUI on a, on a Windows computer, for example, and you can connect to the Zen server. Take note of the IP address, 172.16.1.250, which is my IP address, yours will be different. 
Uh, and that is the IP that you'll use with something like Zen Center, for example, by Citrix to actually go connect to this host directly and manage all your virtual machines. So you'll need to connect to the GUI of the Zen server via something like Zen Center. And then you can start creating all of your virtual machines within Zen Center, uh, within Zen server, sorry. So that is the entire step to install and basic configuration for Zen server. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for a whole bunch of more videos.